You know what's really interesting about today is even with the obesity epidemic and many, many other problems going about, doctors and nutritionists and many authority figures, in fact, preach for us to eat the healthiest diet. However, if we look at what they're eating, they're, what they're eating is actually very, very unhealthy. And what they're advocating for, fruits and vegetables, are even worse. Now, this might sound very strange and you might go, that's definitely not true. There's no way that is true. <laughs> look at the science behind this and the biochemistry, we will very, very quickly realize that every single one of these claims that the doctors are making are not healthy and they're not true. And you want to avoid listening to that nutritional advice because that is the worst possible advice that you can listen to. And if you want to kill yourself very quickly, as well as increase your rate of aging and many other things, then go right ahead. But I wouldn't recommend that. Now, the really weird thing about all of this is many of these people actually did go to school and they ended up learning these things. Now, the even weirder part about all of that is the fact that they went to biochemistry class and they got to understand the mechanism and a little bit of more detailed understanding on how this stuff works. Now, what's really weird is somehow, even though they went to this biochemistry class and many of these other very important classes, they didn't seem to be able to apply all of that knowledge that they learned in school to the real world. And this is what I'm going to do today. I'm going to teach you as an undergraduate student because I'm actually able to apply all of this knowledge to the real world and you'll be able to see why every single one of those things that those doctors say are actually not only untrue, they are completely full of it. Yes, and there's a lot of biochemistry to it. So let's understand what exactly is going on. Now there's a couple of statements that are always thrown about, like glucose is the primary energy source of the body and your body prefers to run off of glucose. Or maybe even that polyunsaturated fats are very healthy, like those omega-6s and omega-3s are absolutely essential and you need to have high amounts of them. Or maybe even another claim like, oh my God, fruits and vegetables are healthy. Well, let's take a look at the biochemistry and the small details on what's going on there. Specifically, we're gonna be looking at polyunsaturated fats and we're gonna be looking at glucose. Now, there are many common myths about glucose, like your brain absolutely requires glucose to run. No, that actually isn't true. That's been proven wrong. The second one is that all the cells in your body absolutely require glucose in order to function. That one also isn't true. There is only one cell actually in your body that absolutely requires glucose, and that is your erythrocytes, otherwise known as your red blood cells. And the third thing that is very commonly said about glucose is that because it's the primary energy source of the brain, you need it in order to function because that's where you get your energy from. Actually, no, that is how you get less energy. We already know this because we know that glucose produces way, way less ATP, especially when compared to fatty acid. And when we go through fatty acid oxidation, we produce three times more ATP, which basically is another way of saying three times more energy which why exactly would we say glucose is the primary energy source when we already learned in biochemistry class the exact opposite, more ATP is produced during fatty acid oxidation. Actually, I learned it in the um, cell bio class, so I learned it even before biochemistry. So that's sad. Apparently, you just can't apply this stuff to real life, can you, huh? Now, glucose isn't actually the glucose that you think it is. Glucose has three forms. It has alpha-D-glucopyranose, beta-D-glucopyranose, and then there is just the simple D-glucose. Now, even though I said it's simple, it's not actually that simple. And the reason is because even though it looks like the simplest one, it is the most complex, more specifically, it is really wreaking havoc on your cells and you don't want this stuff. You really want to avoid this stuff because this is what causes glycation. However, the other two forms of glucose are much more stable, and these are the forms of glucose that your body does want to use. Now, there are two differences between whether or not you use glucose or whether or not you use fatty acid as the primary energy source. Now, when you choose to use glucose as the primary energy source, you would actually know that one, more of it goes to complex one, and that's because we already know that during oxidative phosphorylation, more of NADH is being made, and that NADH goes to complex one. Complex one is more prone to reactive oxygen species. However, it, the ratio is about five to one, meaning there is about five NADH to one FADH2, which these two things are electron carriers, NADH and FADH2. However, when we go through fatty acid oxidation, it is about 31, I think, to 15, if I remember correctly, meaning that it's about two to one. So there is actually way, way 
less NADH and way, way more FADH2. Now you might say, well, what's the big deal with these things? Well, it turns out that when you actually go through complex one over and over again, more specifically complex one, is more prone to reactive oxygen species and electron leakage. Now, reactive oxygen species and electron leakage is another way of saying damage that you don't want to have. That stuff ain't good. Now, to be more specific, reactive oxygen species are basically when a oxygen molecule becomes a superoxide, and it basically has a little extra electron on it, and that electron will end up making it turn into a hydrogen peroxide, and then after it turns into a hydrogen peroxide, it will turn into a hydroxyl free radical. Now, this doesn't just apply to only a hydroxyl free radicals that can be made, which are the reactive oxygen species. It can also be a nitric oxide. Now that's another thing, but there are a couple other things. And just to keep it short, we're gonna stick with hydroxyl free radicals. Now more of those in the process are being made when you're actually going through more glucose oxidation, because once again, we have more NADH and more of that NADH goes to complex one. And we know that complex one is more prone to electron leakage. So why exactly would we be saying that glucose is actually healthy and the primary energy source of the cell when it seems to not only cause more reactive oxygen species, it causes more damage because that reactive oxygen species causes a lot of damage, which we will be covering a little bit later. Now, deuterium is also a big deal, especially when it comes to understanding electron leakage and big problems happening like reactive oxygen species. Now, deuterium is just an isotope of hydrogen, and that means that it has one proton and one neutron with one electron, and regular hydrogen has one proton and one electron. Now, this makes a very big deal, especially when it comes to your cells and when your cell is trying to go through oxidative phosphorylation and ATP synthase is actually trying to work and basically crank out the energy, the ATP that you need. It can't quite do this, especially when it's being hit by deuterium. And when it is hit by deuterium, imagine fitting five pounds into a one pound bag or 10 pounds into a five pound bag. That isn't going to work. And there's a pretty good chance that that bag is gonna end up breaking. And once again, you get more reactive oxygen species, which are more damaging. And this probably has to do with the fact of the kinetic isotope theory. Now, this is basically when, when there is a molecule of whatever kind, and it is an isotope of that molecule, then what will end up happening is that molecule will actually react slower if it's the isotope in comparison to the regular one. And that has to do with the fact that once again, it has that little extra neutron. Now you might say, what's the big deal about that? Well, the reason that's a big deal is because it, if it is reacting slower, which it is, then what will end up happening is it is, has a longer time to be in an intermediate state and that during that intermediate state there is a very very uh, high amount of reactivity and when that happens that's a big deal because that's exactly how you get your superoxide forming and that's actually just chemistry that's uh, pure chemistry i wouldn't really say that's biochemistry intermediate states are usually just chemistry now let's talk about why polyunsaturated fats are actually very, very unhealthy for you. And not only are they unhealthy for you, they actually cause way more damage than you probably think they do. Now, as you might have heard me talk about before, I did talk a lot about reactive oxygen species and stuff. Now, this is where the damage of that reactive oxygen species comes in. Not only do reactive oxygen species cause oxidative stress, they also cause something called lipid peroxidation. Now, if it's a polyunsaturated fat, that reactive oxygen species will absolutely love to attack that polyunsaturated fat. And the reason has to do with the fact that the polyunsaturated fat has a pi bond because it has a double bond. And that double bond allows for the delocalization of electrons and in the process of that entire thing what ends up happening is that reactive oxygen species looks at that delocalized uh, set of electrons and it goes oh my god i can't wait to attack this so it completely just runs straight at it and it's very very attracted to it and this is a problem because what ends up happening when these two things react is you end up getting malonaldialdehyde which is a very toxic off product just to name one example or you also end up getting the cell membrane lysing or whatever that lipid structure is, end up lysing and that basically means breaking. Now, if it is the cell membrane, yes, you might guess that's a problem because that means your cell is breaking. Now, what about that malonaldialdehyde? What about that toxic off product? Well, that's where your body actually has to clean that stuff up and that takes energy for your body and that's basically wasting your energy on cleaning up a problem that didn't need to happen in the first place. So why are you doing it? That's not healthy. So once again, that is another reason as to why glucose oxidation, more specifically, not only that, polyunsaturated fats with glucose oxidation is insanely, insanely harmful. 
Now you might have heard about linoleic acid and linoleic acid is absolutely essential because you need it and your body can't create it. And yes, that is true. And then afterwards they would say, well, that means that the best source are from plants. That one isn't true. Now, why exactly isn't that true? Well, it turns out that linoleic acid isn't actually quite just linoleic acid perceived by your body. And if you have the wrong linoleic acid, which is in plants, in comparison to animal linoleic acid, which is otherwise known as conjugated linoleic acid, you will experience a very, very highly inflammatory step. Specifically, that linoleic acid gets converted into arachidonic acid, and that arachidonic acid is really inflammatory, and that's not good for you. Now, if you're interested in why inflammation is absolutely killer, and basically like a um, drugged, drugged up guy, then I recommend you check out my video on that because I talk all about that. And yeah, it's um, not good. You don't want inflammation because it's not necessary. Inflammation is only there to protect you from pathogens or some sort of problem or basically the healing process. You're not looking for chronic inflammation. Now, because linoleic acid goes through this very highly inflammatory arachidonic acid, that means that inflammation is stimulated. However, with conjugated linoleic acid, the one from animal, fats, this isn't actually quite the case. In fact, it doesn't have to go through this insanely inflammatory step and it will basically ignore a lot of that inflammatory marker that's being usually produced by the linoleic acid found in plants. In comparison, animal fats don't have this problem. So once again, if you want that linoleic acid, then you don't want it from plant, especially you don't want it from seed oils. I mean, I don't know why this is touted as healthy or even essential. This is like, I mean, it's, it's shocking. It's truly shocking. After this, you probably are wondering, well, okay, obviously polyunsaturated fats are way unhealthier. What exactly is the difference? How big of a difference is it? Well, it turns out that if we compare the difference, animal fats in comparison to seed oils are usually around 20 to 250 times more polyunsaturated fats. So yeah, it's, um, it's a dramatic margin. It's a very, very dramatic margin. And once again, if you have those polyunsaturated fats, they are more susceptible to lipid peroxidation, not something helpful. And if they're the regular form of linoleic acid, for instance, and not the conjugated form, then that's more inflammation and that is not helpful and that's not healthy for your body as well. Now, what about the difference between glucose and fructose though? I mean, is there really that big of a difference? Well, when we look at fructose, fructose actually has a much, much higher affinity to cause glycation. And when that glycation happens, it will bind to something, it will render it useless, and then your body has to salvage it and get rid of it or even basically kill the cell itself. And that is not helpful. Your body doesn't want to have to kill itself for no reason or kill its cells for absolutely no reason at all. And this has to do with the fact that, remember that D-glucose form? Well, yeah, that's the one that causes glycation and that one's the bit really big problem. Well, turns out that fructose is just eight to 10 times way better at that. So once again, that is another reason to avoid eating all those starchy foods like fruits because fruits have high, high amounts of fructose in them. And when you end up causing really, really high amounts of that fructose being eaten, especially for you, you will get advanced glycation end products or AGES. And over time, especially when you grow older, your brain won't be able to handle that. And that is basically the cause of Alzheimer's. That's right, it's AGES or advanced glycation end products. Usually they come from fructose, especially at the levels that we have today, although they can come from glucose. Now, in order to understand what exactly is going on here, not so much from a scientific standpoint, but instead from an analogy standpoint, let's look at this like the cellular circus. Now, imagine your body as a grand circus with different nutrients, like various performers, each with their role in the show. Now, glucose is like a really, really hyperactive clown running around the circus. At first, he seems really energetic and fun and all, but soon, obviously, he starts knocking things over, maybe causing a little bit of chaos and exhausting absolutely everybody. Now, polyunsaturated fats, especially from seed oils, are like those overly ambitious jugglers. They insist on juggling flaming torches, chainsaws, and live animals all at once. Initially, very impressive but things you might guess can get a little bit out of control. Now, torches could be dropped everywhere and this sets small fires all about, which is oxidative stress in this case. Chainsaws can quite literally go flying into the audience, which is otherwise known as inflammation, and animals get loose and they cause chaos, which is another way of saying systemic health issues. 
Now, on the other hand, the saturated fats and monounsaturated fats are like steady, reliable acrobats. They perform their routines consistently and safely, and they keep the show running smoothly. Now, those antioxidants, like vitamin C, are the cleanup crew trying to minimize the damage caused by all these clowns and jugglers, basically who are maybe a little bit overly ambitious and overzealous, and they help, but they can't completely undo the chaos that is done. In this cellular circus, you want more of the performers who are more stable, and you want less of the performers who are less stable because they aren't reliable. So some of the key takeaways from this video are one, glucose isn't actually as essential as you might think it is, and it is not the primary energy source of the cell. Two, polyunsaturated fats, especially from seed oils, are very prone to lipid peroxidation, and this makes them very unstable and not a good option, especially when it comes to preventing that lysing of the cell membrane. Three, both glucose and polyunsaturated fats also cause this increased amount of oxidative stress, which is linked to pretty much every single health problem that you can probably think of, as well as accelerated aging. Four, the linoleic acid from plants is actually way, way worse and way more inflammatory than the linoleic acid found in animals, which is conjugated. Five, deuterium is very, very high in plant material in comparison to animal materials, and it does cause this reactive oxygen species to be generated because it really does mess with ATP synthase. And six, beta oxidation in comparison to glucose oxidation is much more efficient and it generates less reactive oxygen species and less problems for your body to deal with. Now, if you're interested in more details on how exactly this works, then I recommend you check out my Science Behind Carnivore playlist where I cover a lot of the biochemistry behind why exactly carnivore works, pretty much all of it actually. So once again, thanks for watching. If you found the video helpful, then please like, share the video with other people, subscribe and comment down below because it really does help the channel grow. And if you are interested in seeing my videos ahead of time, then please click the join button down below where you can see my videos ahead of time. So once again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.